Hi everyone, Rich Crescenti here with another in our series of videos, Making Music with Melodyne. And today we're going to be discussing finding a tempo, and also making a tempo map from the tracks that you've been given. Now, for this demonstration today, we're going to be using Studio One due to the very tight integration of Studio One and Melodyne. If you've already used an ARA-enabled DAW before, you're already familiar with the numerous benefits of it, from not having to have any transfer times to being able to make edits in your audio and have those changes track in Melodyne. And there are plenty of videos about that. You can find them on the Celimony website. That's not what we're going to be focusing on today. Today, again, is on finding the tempo of a track and then making a tempo map from that track. Okay. So we've been sent some tracks, and there's a variety of reasons you might be sent tracks. You could be a mixer, you could be a producer, and you'll be altering that content or changing it or adding some and sending it back. Maybe you're a studio musician, and all you'll be doing is recording your instrumentation and then sending it back to the artist. Either way, when this happens, when you've been sent some tracks, you need to make a decision. Uh... And, and that decision effectively boils down to, do you want to alter the audio that you have to match the grid, to match a click track, to be perfect? Or do you want to have the click track and the tempo follow the human performance that you have? And there is no right or wrong answer right here. There's just what you are looking for. Now, in this particular case, this track, Eric Myers and the Rev, uh, I want to keep this human performance, right? This was played by musicians. There are no virtual instruments right here. And it was recorded to a click, but there are still some very minimal human imperfections and performance variations. And I like those. I want to keep those. So what I'm going to do, instead of altering this audio to match the click, I'm going to create a tempo map so that the click track perfectly follows along with the very human performance that's here. Okay, now just to show you real quick, uh, if I was sent these tracks and I already knew the tempo, I could just type in that tempo here and Studio One would follow that. Or I could come over here to where it says tempo and change it to time stretch and then come down here for this file and set that file tempo. And then I could stretch that audio to match the tempo that was set. But again, that's not what we're looking for today. Today we want to create a tempo map. And either way, those other methods, they don't really help you very much if you don't know the tempo or if you have a song that has a variable tempo. And again, Melodyne to the rescue right here. So a couple of good pieces of guidance if you want to create a tempo map to your performance is one, I would start off with something that is rhythmic and I would probably try and pr choose something that goes throughout the entire length of the song as well. If you don't have something that goes throughout the whole length of the song, you can choose a few different tracks and piece that tempo map together. But in this case, I happen to have the overhead track right here, which is both rhythmic and plays throughout the whole song. So I'm going to come in here to Studio One, right-click on this and choose Edit with Melodyne. And you'll see that very, very quickly, Melodyne, due to the tight integration with Studio One, has analyzed this audio and given this to us. And if we press play, let's just listen. Okay, obviously that doesn't match up. We are still at our base default tempo right here of 120. What we need to do is we need to go into Melodyne and find the tempo. We need to tell it what the tempo is since that's what we're trying to do. And you'll notice this flashing button right here, right? That says file tempo. When it's flashing like that, that's telling you to pay attention. You need to make a choice right there. So when we click on this, we see assign file tempo. And this is how Melodyne goes into assignment mode and we'll find a tempo for that whole song. And you now see that we have a tempo for that song right there. You'll notice now, you'll see the wrench. We are in note assignment mode. Now a reminder, when you're in note assignment mode, this is not where we change the audio. This is where we ensure that Melodyne is interpreting the audio in the way that we want. And first thing we're doing is ensuring that Melodyne is interpreting the tempo in the way that we want. Now that it's uh, analyzed, let's take a listen. I'm sorry, I'm going to turn our metronome on.
Okay, the tempo matches. The tempo lines up with the song, but the bar and beat markers aren't where we want them. There's an offset in there, and that's pretty easy to fix. So let's come in here and take a look at our tempo window. I want to show you this right here. We're looking at this tempo window for the first time. We see there is our beat markers at the top. And at the bottom, we'll see these little hash marks right here. These are what Melodyne calls pulses. And these pulses are effectively, based off the audio and the song, the smallest subdivision that you would want to tap your feet alongside to when you were finding the tempo or playing along with the song. Now this song is in 4-4, we see this time signature right here, so you'll see that there is, for every measure there is a count of four, right? We have four uh, beat subdivisions within a bar. We can change that if we want to. I could come to this time signature and choose 6-8, and you'll notice the tempo has stayed the same, but the subdivisions of the beat has changed. Give this a listen. Okay, now that's still in time with the song, but that's not the way that we would count this. So I'm gonna go back to 4-4, four, four, and we wanna make sure that this lines up and is working the way that we would count it, and that the bar and beat markers match the audio as well. All right, so looking at this, I wanna move bar three to be the beginning of the song right here, and moving the whole list of bar and beat markers is very easy. You can just grab it right here and move it over, and you'll see it put bar three beat one right at the beginning of the song. So now when we listen, we get. Okay, now not only does our tempo match, but the bar and beat markers match up with this as well. Great. One more thing that I think you should really invest some time in fixing right here. Since we're creating a tempo map, we want this to be accurate throughout the whole song. So now we wanna make sure that it works at the beginning and at the very end. And if you'll notice, while the bar and beat markers match up with the audio, you'll notice that the very beginning of the audio track itself is not at bar one, beat one. So we're gonna to need to alter this. And in this case, I don't wanna move the whole timeline. What I wanna do is stretch this bar one, beat one to match right at the beginning of the audio right here. Now there are a couple of different ways that you can stretch and move the timeline within here. So let's take a look at this, right? For one, if we come to this marker right here, this icon, I can grab this and this is sort of free form and you'll notice as I move this, this changes everything after it and before it, slowing it down and then bringing it back up. That's one option. Now maybe I don't wanna change everything, maybe I just wanna change within one specific area. So if we come to the lower half of this line right here, you'll see this icon. When you click on a bar marker, it selects a bar before and a bar after. And I can now vary the tempo within those. If you select a beat marker, it selects just that bar. And I can vary a tempo within those. Or if I wanted to, I could just drag right here and just select those two. And then I could vary the tempo within those. Very easy ways to change this. So in this case, what I want to do is stretch bar one beat one to be right at the very beginning of that audio file right there. Okay, so now what we get is a really accurate eight bar count before this song begins. Okay, great. However, this created one more small problem, right? If you look at the tempo right here, this is a, a human performance, so this is going to fluctuate throughout the song as it's mapped alongside the song. And that's fine for when the song is playing, but we really don't want that in a count off. Watch what happens to this tempo right here as we look at this count off. You'll notice that's fluctuating, right? So I don't want that to happen. I want our count off to be consistent. So I can easily just select this count off portion right here. Right click on it and choose make tempo constant. And now what we get is at the very least a clear consistent count off, which will make it easy for anyone to play alongside this. Check this out. Okay, great. Now. 
I would recommend taking a little bit of time right here and looking through the whole song and making sure that it matches up and we don't need to make any further adjustments. Sometimes when you see gaps like this, there may be an issue. Let's take a listen. Okay, that worked out fine. If there was an issue, we could go in and stretch and change the same way I showed you right at the very beginning of the song. Okay, we have now assigned our tempo. We've got a tempo that matches perfectly alongside this performance, right? We are now done in note assignment mode. And I wanna show you something, right? If we look over here, we still see that the file tempo has not been set. So I want you to pay attention to this right here where it says not set. When I leave note assignment mode, when I go back to track mode, you'll notice it now says map. And that's telling you that this particular track has a tempo map all the way through that right there. Now, this is the integration that I was talking about earlier between Melodyne and Studio One, because now what we can do is come up here to this track and click on the event and just drag that information right up to our tempo map. And now from the very beginning of the song for the entire click track and the song we have Okay, now we have a click track that perfectly follows along with this very human performance. If I wanted to record anything else alongside it, I have a click track that matches. If I want to use any virtual instruments, they will line up with our real instruments. And if I want to use any delays or other time-based effects that need to sync, I've got that matched in there as well. Hope you've enjoyed today. Thanks.